Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we are wrapping up the Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy. That's right. His origin story. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> yep. We got there, didn't we? We sure did. Fought a guy in space or whatever happened. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. things they discuss in this movie. Absolutely. Do you remember Spider-Man's origin when he helped save the universe and he learned a lesson or two about being a young man? Yeah. That the, all the lesson he needed to become a friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man and get cats out of trees or whatever. And kill Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes. That classic origin story. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Please leave a like on this video. Now listen, Mason. Yes. I know you and a lot of people have kind of soured on this movie, right? I, no, correction, James. I was always sour on this movie. Because <laughs> when we reviewed it on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, I remember saying I had an enormous amount of fun with this movie. But if I could be a teensy, weensy, tiny little bit critical, I think the writing could have done with some work and people were like oh i actually don't think you know how to review movies by saying there might be something slightly wrong with this movie uh i think you went into this movie wanting to hate this movie uh i think you're a real dc fanboy marvel hater yeah and i am all those things are true <laughs> but i stand by them until i'm paid money to not stand by them in which case i'll, I'll do the old switcheroo but look that's what i'm talking about right you need to look at this movie from the perspective of the time that it came out what like two years ago we're in COVID. all the movies were cancelled this movie was shot in a cupboard nobody was in the same room at any point that's right we got moving pictures on a screen and we were <laughs> glad to have it <laughs> No, you're absolutely I'm right. I'm not saying it's great. No, I'm okay, sure. Well, I am saying it's great because my check just cleared. <laughs> so I'm just che I'm looking at my banking app and now it is great. But yeah, this works so much better with an audience. Oh, sure. When yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. Mm, sure. Because there's even moments where there's pauses to cheer for the people that show up. Yes. Very noticeable. I No, not for me. I still did it. <laughs> you still did it, did you? Yeah. Anyway, before we get into the nitty gritty of all the things that you love about this movie, now mm -hmm. that your check's cleared, I just want to talk about the relationship between Sony and Marvel because okay. this had elapsed before this movie went into production fully. So going forward with a new deal between uh -huh. Sony and Marvel, which they both would benefit from, Disney wanted the films to be financed on a 50-50 basis. Kevin Feige would remain as a producer. But Sony, though, was saying, no, what we want to do is that Marvel receive about 5% of the first dollar gross and all of the merchandise. Okay, sure. It was up in the air for a while. Tom Holland even called Bob Iger crying. Do you remember that story? <laughs> I do remember oh, that. Oh, please, Mr. I'm, I just, I don't leave me with Sony. Don't leave me in the Morbius universe. Fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. Very distressing. I would be crying too. So, so the deal was... <laughs> You would cry too if it happened to you. Stuck in the Sony universe. It sucks. <laughs> so Marvel and Disney now would receive about 25% of the profits. This is according to Variety. Disney would retain the merchandising rights and they'd put up about a quarter of the financing and then Spider-Man could also appear in future MCU films, etc. Oh, so dream. Yeah. A guy you recognise in another property you recognise. Oh, I've seen a guy and I'm like, that's Beast. That's Kelsey Grammer's Beast. He looks weird, but he's here. I don't think he is here. <laughs> no, he wasn't there. I think it was a stick with a tennis ball on it. <laughs> they made him there with computers. Well, there's a lot of that going on here because you have a theory and a little bit of research to back it up. I have no research. Let me just say, you've got a book in front of you, Mason. I do have a book you in front of you. You brought a book for the first time in your life <laughs> about the story of this and how it changed over time with reshoots and development and all of that, right? Should we get into that now? Let's do it. Well, I mean, you know, as you previously mentioned, you know, we, we were happy to have this because because... <laughs> You know, it was during COVID. But we were blessed. But also, you know, the production of this seems to have been a nightmare. A lot of people have probably read this book, The Reign of Marvel Studios by Joanna Robinson, Dave Gonzalez and Gavin Edwards. And it's filled with hot, juicy gossip about the production of the creation and the, the enduring legacy of the Marvel Universe. The enduring, MCU. yeah. Well, according to the book, uh, because the screenplay was constantly in flux, none of the actors could read a locked script. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? They joined the project based on their faith in Feige. And money. Also a bunch they of They would have got so much money for this, the two returning Spider-Mans. All the Spider-Men. Well, recently there was that interview with Tom Hollander who accidentally received one of Tom Holland's checks. That's right. And it was like... More money than he'd ever seen in his life. And it was a fraction of a percentage of what he was going to get for one of the Avengers yeah, films. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. yeah. And famously, uh, uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire didn't sign on until, mm. like, into filming. Yeah. Which is crazy. What if they'd said no? Yeah. I mean, I guess Marvel would just add a zero to... Just cost, keep adding zeros to the end of the check. I think they had some... Wow, $100 and dot zero, 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 zero. <laughs> I'm in. I think they did definitely have some ideas, and I'm going to talk about some yeah. concept art for some stuff to link to this universe, uh -huh. or their universes, I should say. I think they definitely had backup plans in place. Yeah. But this is 
half a movie if they hadn't have got them in. Yeah, throughout the shoot, Summers and McKenna kept fabricating new pages as more actors signed their contracts and joined the cast. God damn. And then, of course, you know, a lot of people couldn't film together. Some of the villains weren't even here. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch shot his scenes in November before decamping to London for principal photography on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which, again, was supposed to happen before this movie. That's right, yeah. And so they had to, So this movie was originally going to feature America Chavez, who can punch holes in dimensions. Right. They... they they were like, well, we can't debut her in this week because she has You need to have seen a person before. Exactly. Somebody needs to appear in a movie before they're in a movie. The bravest thing you can do <laughs> is debut a new character. But again, I, I think so much of this movie, in a second viewing, you can really see the seams and where stuff stuff happened due to necessity, yeah. not because it was planned out. And I think it, the movie is all the weaker for that. Yeah, I think specifically you're talking about Doctor Strange's decision to cast a spell for everybody to forget Peter Parker and then be like, why did you do this? Well, here's the, the, the look. You're a man. What are you doing? I haven't I haven't done any research, but I've got this whole thing <laughs> in my head. And like, look, look, everybody knows the origin of Spider-Man. And if this video is somehow your first exposure to Spider-Man, obviously it's Peter Parker is an ordinary high school student. He's bitten by a radioactive spider, which gives him powers that are vaguely related to being a spider. Yeah. And so, but instead of using them to uh, do good, he decides to be selfish and use it to make money. And in, in the process of that, he could have stopped a robbery, but he doesn't. And then the robber then goes to his home and he kills his Uncle Ben. And therefore he learns the lesson, with great power comes great responsibility. Now, when we see Tom Holland's first appearance in the MCU in Captain America Civil War, mm. clearly something like that has happened to him. Yes. But it's not said in so many words. And I think in some people's minds, if it wasn't said on screen, it didn't happen. Right. And so in this movie, they're like, you know what? We should have... The lesson he learns in this movie be with great power comes great responsibility. Except, first of all, that's already happened to him, right? He saved the universe. Do you remember when he did that? I remember. But on a smaller scale, like remember when he gave up any chances of his relationship with Liz? Yeah. Because he thought, you know, mostly correctly, that it was actually, you know, it was a good thing to do to, mm -hmm. to stop the vulture. Remember the time in the last movie when he gave up the, the weapons of mass destruction that that dead guy gave him. I would have kept that. I would have kept it too. Yeah. But in his mind, it was too much responsibility hit for him, so he, for he gave it away. And in this one, the lesson he learns isn't with great power comes great responsibility. It's don't trust adults because... <laughs> They seem to be on your side, but they have their own agendas and they're just using you for their own ends. First of all, Doctor Strange doesn't cast a spell because he wants Peter's life to be good. He wants to do it to prove to Wong that he's a better sorcerer and he becomes become Sorcerer Supreme yeah. again. right? And then it, it's ruined. And then he's like, what did you do, Peter Park? You didn't do anything. When Aunt May dies and she's like, with great power must come great responsibility, did she think she was talking to, to <laughs> Doctor Strange? I think maybe. Yeah. Right? It's wild that he pretty much is indirectly or directly responsible for everything that happens in this movie. And then in the later part of the movie, Peter Parker wants to use his scientific genius and his gifts to save all the other, save the villains before they die in an altered dimension. Yeah. And then... He wants to depower them and then send them back at the moment of their death. That's right. So they're really dead. They're really in for it. But, but he, want, he wants to do the right thing. He's doing the right thing. But then the Green Goblin betrays him. Yeah. Remember that? I, do, I remember and I didn't like the way he did that. But here's the thing and here's where my completely unresearched conspiracy theory comes in. Right. I think there was a version of this movie, maybe not filmed, but maybe some of it was filmed. <laughs> maybe not not scripted, but maybe some of it was scripted. Maybe it was part of the the, the story plan where this version of Spider-Man in this movie did act irresponsibly, and all the 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 events of the movie were directly his fault, which led to leads to the death of Aunt May, and then which explains why Doctor Strange is so mad at him all the time. It also makes sense if you framed it as. I need to get this box because this box is going to solve all my problems as mm. opposed to s save the villains. Because yeah. that box can be anything. That can be a everybody forgets me box. It can yeah. be whatever. Could be a baguette. Could be a baguette. But what I think it is, I think there's maybe, a, there's a version of this, and we'll never know for sure, but there, I think there's a version of this movie where he goes to Doctor Strange and he says, Doctor Strange, can you ha do you have anything that can help everybody in the world forget who I am? And Doctor Strange says, yes, it's in this spell book, but... You can't have it because it's too dangerous. We're mm. not going to cast the spell. And so Peter Parker's like, well, I saved the universe. I'm responsible. I know what I'm doing. I'm a genius. Yep. Maybe Doctor Strange doesn't want me to have this because he knows I'll become the Sorcerer Supreme. How hard could it be? And he steals the spell book. And then he goes to Ned and MJ and he's like, 
let's cast this spell. And Ned's like, well, my grandma always said I was a bit magic. And then they cast the spell and then all the walls of the dimensions explode or whatever. And then Doctor Strange is legit mad at him. You yeah, know what I mean? Because Morbius is there. You know the scene in the mirror dimension... Yeah. I don't think I don't think Doctor Strange is chasing him holding the box initially at all. I think it was the spell he steals. Yeah, I think on set also it's just a green box. Yeah, as I'm sure people know stuff. that the production of these Marvel movies, like in pre-production, they figure out all the action sequences first. Yeah. And then they sort of string the storyline within them. By the time the director gets there, they're done. They're pretty much done. Don't worry about it. Could you get that guy to emote? I tried, but it didn't work. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> here's a million dollars. But I think they built the Mirror Dimension action sequence for this other thing and then they're just like oh we, we can't have this version of spider-man be an irresponsible kid who learns a lesson mm. even though that's his actual origin story i think they were like well, he's got to be a golden boy all the time and he's he just always does the right thing and we've we've already made this mirror dimension thing so could he have still steal a box mm. he's still a box just any box, just any box or anything or anyone yeah, 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 yeah. that's my first problem with this movie oh sure that really yeah that really long problem that you have with yeah it. yeah yeah so I gotta say, I think it's good having all the three Spider Men together when they're just standing around, just shooting the shit. I gotta say, even though I have some problems with the movie, anytime all those guys were on screen, I'm like, ah, oh, it's my boys are back. Look at them, my boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to have them back. Yeah, oh, hit me right in the feel. So that's how they got me. You know, exactly. Yeah, but there is another problem with those returning characters, and mm -hmm. I know you have a problem with it, where it feels like they're stuck in amber. Yes. We get a little bit of Andrew Garfield being like, well, after you last saw me when I was fighting the rhino or whatever, however my last movie ended, mm. I got angry and I started hitting people for real and I got real angry about it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Just people at the shops. <laughs> yeah. You know? Whereas Toby Maguire was like, I was, I'm all right. I'm doing okay and whatever I'm doing, whatever that is. Mm. It's fine, or is it? I'm making it work, or am I? Am I? I don't know. I could do a little bit better, or could I? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a chance we might re-explore these universes, and I don't want to say I've done anything. Oh, we're definitely going to. So, according to screenwriter Chris McKenna, Tobey Maguire wanted to be very minimal about how much you know. So, uh, okay, that sure. was apparently an input that he had in this universe. So sure, okay. There you go. But, you know, like you said, just them talking about, like, the weird villains they fought, it's fun. Doing science together... Love that. Mm -hmm. You know when they come through the portals and there's moments where people pause so the audience can cheer? Yes, I did. It's fun, Mason. It is fun. Andrew Garfield is just doing fucking laps around everybody, yeah. just charismaing the shit out of every scene that he's yeah, in. Uh -huh. Yeah, it really highlights how good he is in very average movies. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Wait, what do you mean? This movie was great. All the guys were there. We cheered. <laughs> I'm talking about his Spider-Man movies. Oh, they were average, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so J.K. Simmons, of course, returns as Alex Jones. And uh, mm -hmm. that's a bit of fun. I like how you see his like set developers. He's obviously getting more money as it goes along. You know, it's a little kind of rinky-dink blue screen situation. Like we did. Yeah, exactly. Except we've pretty much kept the same. <laughs> We're even more rinky-dink, if anything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Daredevil's in this, of course. Mm. There's the funny story about Charlie Cox hearing about how much people were excited. Hearing like Daredevil would. Hearing like Daredevil would and can. Like people were cheering to see him in cinemas. I so he, he snuck into a theatre showing uh -huh. to complete silence. That's great. <laughs> Keeps him humble. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the villains in this, though, like I said, it kind of feels like they were filmed in a cupboard. Two of them weren't even there. Any footage you see of Sandman and Kurt Connors uh -huh. in human form is from their movies. Yes, absolutely. So they just did voice roles. That's also why the lizard is just in a van for an extended period of time in this movie. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, and sure. And Sandman is just a sandy guy sitting on a couch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just things like that. But of the villains that are actually in this movie, yeah. I think they're quite good. They are pretty good. But I'm, the thing about them, though, is on the one hand... Tom Holland's Spider-Man is now going to face versions of those villains in his universe that he already knows their secrets and how to defeat them? No, 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 Mason. He's going to fight Craven and oh, yeah. Ezekiel Sims and <laughs> That's a good Venom fight. or Carnage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Morbius. Maybe Morbius, sure. <laughs> You're getting your dog shit Sinister Six movie whether you like it or not. But on the other hand, I'm like, okay, well, I guess what this does is it enables this version of Spider-Man to fight villains outside the norm. Yeah. Like, mate, Norm and Osborn. Wow, wow. Thank you. So maybe 
you know, we'll be able to dive further into that and because the the Spider Man Rogues Gallery is huge. Yeah. So maybe maybe we don't have to have an MCU version of the Green Goblin. They could do a Hobgoblin. Could do a Hobgoblin. Or a different coloured goblin. That's right. You know, I mean, Ned Leeds is sometimes a, a goblin, isn't he? Yeah, whatever, sometimes he's so a goblin. I don't know if they're going to go in that direction at any point. But look, here's some stuff in this that I think is great. Okay, right. Good. I'm prepared to counter them all. But all right. Go. I think his fight with Willem Dafoe mm-hmm. is amazing. Sure. Because you see him just go, I've never fought a complete fucking lunatic before. Exactly. <laughs> it's got a touch of the Sam Raimi's about it. Yeah. It's, it's really brutal. And I Absolutely. Think it's good, yeah. I think it is kind of a downer that, again, a guy from another universe kill his aunt later. <laughs> You know I mean? Well, it was Doctor Strange, really. It was Doctor Strange. You take it right back. He is the guy from that universe. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Now. I think also having Peter Parker like go through the ring up in this like emotionally and physically is good. Like he's all fucked up. Even though he went to space, uh-huh. like this is worse than anything that's happened to him prior. And you know, who doesn't love a bit of Spider-Man misery? We haven't seen enough of it, have we? It <laughs> is so true. Also, I think some of the callbacks are quite heartfelt, right? The moment where MJ is caught by Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. It's a little wonky on the, on the landing. Sure, sure, sure. But I think that's a nice moment. Only if you've seen that movie, obviously. Do you think it's, do you think it's counterbalanced by the fact that some of the villains just say their catchphrases? That's like, what I was going to say. How did you remember that? How did you remember I'm something of a scientist myself? How did you remember the power of the sun in the palm of my hand? How so do the, you remember I'm the lizard and I live in a van? They're all, yep. <laughs> they're all here, aren't they? <laughs> they sure are, yep. My back. Yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, I yeah. don't love. And there mm. is also, you notice the pause after some of those. Yeah. It's like, I'm something of a scientist. Pause. Hooray! <laughs> yeah. So at the end, right, they are... They, I mean, they all fight on the Statue of Liberty. That's great. But... <laughs> all right, wow. All right. <laughs> that's that was part of your review at the time, wasn't it? <laughs> that was great, I guess. You stood up in the theatre. <laughs> oh, I guess they're going to fight on the Statue of Liberty. I guess that's great. So they do the spell or whatever. Sure. You see a bunch of villains trying to come through the portal. Uh. You see, like, I think you see, like, Craven and maybe Scorpion, or even though he's sort of in this universe already. Sure, but at least he's coming back. He's coming back, maybe. So people don't remember who Spider-Man is, right? Which happens all the time in the comics. Every now and then somebody or everybody finds out, then they reverse it. Sometimes mm. the devil does it. It's not sure, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just curious about how the erasing works here. So does that mean that people remember that there was a Spider-Man, but not Peter Parker? So if you've met Spider-Man and he mm. takes his mask off and yeah. he goes, hello, I'm Peter Parker, yeah. do you just remember being with Spider-Man? Is that how that works? I think so. It must be, right? But also, like... Him renting an apartment and presumably going to college because he normally does that because he's Uh something of a scientist himself. Yay! Yes! (laughs) Ben, Lawrence, leave a big gap there for a huge applause, obviously. (laughs) That means there must be, like, paperwork and records of this person existing, right? Even though his friends don't remember him. let 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 me tell you this. I don't think they know yet. I don't think the people making this know. Because when he arrives at his apartment, he's got some books in a box, and one of them's like the GED, like his high school equivalency test. So I'm thinking maybe he oh, had he's to... Oh, he's that way. I think he maybe had to pass high school again. Right. Oh, my God. Spider-Man goes back to high school yeah, that's for right. three more movies. Yeah, you better believe it. He's got a whole bunch more friends. <laughs> Better friends, actually. I guess he would. And a different MJ. <laughs> and we're like, this was the real one all along. <laughs> Some people, I feel, would be happy with they that. They would be, yeah. But get over it. They, they don't know yet. No. And also, considering in this movie they got rid of the... Uh, you killed Mysterio plot in eight minutes. Yeah. I think they're going to do the same thing in the next one. I oh think they I think they're going to they're going to wrap this up in like almost immediately. He's going to he's going to show up and there's going to be a big thing and a beam of light <laughs> and MJ's going to remember him again. Wow. Yeah. Or they're going to drag it out for another trilogy. I don't know. That's I don't fine know, man. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. not fine. No, it's fine, Mason. Sort it out immediately. But I don't have enough time left in my life for another trilogy where finally we get to his origin and he, MJ's his girlfriend again. Well, you know, we get the new suit at the end and this is the thing that some people want to see with Spider-Man. He's alone. He's yeah. in, like, the traditional comic book suit. Well, they're going to change no it gadgets. again. We know that. We know that already. <laughs> They've already announced they're going to give him a new suit in the next one. Great. Good. Really good. Um, also, congratulations to this movie for having uh, another Spider-Man movie with a funeral at the end. Oh, great. It's been a while. <laughs> sure. It's just good to be back, you know? Mm. I, I don't think Mysterio dying counts because I didn't see any funeral for that guy. You no, know? they just kicked him off the top of that building. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, cool. Also, there's a post credit scene where Venom's there and then there's a bit of the symbiote left and what does that mean? Maybe nothing. Who knows? <laughs> we'll find out down the line. We might do. Anyway, it's time for Trivia Man. No way trivia. The trivia that. section of the show, Mason. I love that. So this blew my mind because I've got excellent wig dart, as you know. Mm-hmm, that's true. 
Benedict Wong wears a wig in this. <gasps> but it's the wig where like the skin's on it. Like the skin's all the way down his forehead because yeah, he's right. got like a shorter haircut and he didn't have that at the time because also multiple reshoots and all of that. Mm -hmm. I know about other wigs in this movie like Ned Leeds wears a wig. Mm -hmm. Doctor Strange's wig continues to just, I find it really offensive sure, because it's okay, like yeah. you're not even trying. It, it's like a wig that fucking Bram Stoker's Dracula would wear. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. Oh, I should have had a beehive. <laughs> it basically is. Should have had a bumper under there. That'd be great. Also, well, they should have made him British. They should have just made him British in this one. Instead of vaguely American. Uh, yep, I agree. Where's he from? At the end, he should have been like, well, we closed the dimensions and everything's normal again, but I'm British. <laughs> So the first trailer for this became the most watched movie trailer with over 355 million global views in the first 24 hours. That's because every YouTuber had to analyze it. Yeah, man. You know we did. So, so really, oh, there's a gap there. There's a Must gap there. the lizard is there. And the lizard was there, the turns out, there. in a lot of those gaps. Yeah, right. absolutely. Because otherwise, Andrew Garfield would have just been punching the air. But what if he was? <laughs> what if we got to the final version of the movie and he's just like, get, get it, get some of this. Peter, what are you? Are you okay? I don't know. <laughs> I've been hitting the head a lot. So some of the concepts that were uh, that went unused was the Green Goblin had like a partial Iron Man suit. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Saw that him zipping about. There was also some concept art of places that they would visit in the Doctor Strange. Spider-Man fight from different Spider-Man dimensions. So they visit the train from Spider-Man 2. Oh my god, the famous train laboratory? Exactly. The secret train laboratory? The pipes bit from Spider-Man 3 where they kill Venom with pipes. Well, they just left the pipes there for like 20 years. Yeah, they left the pipes, man. Uh, they do the kiss. It's Doctor Strange. Doctor like, Strange and Spider-Man do yeah, the upside down kiss. Pretty much, yeah. Yes. They also were going to visit Times Square from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Doctor Strange was going to be confused for like a street performer or whatever. Oh, so yeah, okay. I think these were some ideas where they went, if we can't give them the Spider-Men, we'll just put them in seeds minutes after they left or whatever. People would have hated that. I agree. And if I were Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield's agent, I would have said that. I would have been like... <laughs> You can try that, but people will hate it. They will come to Marvel Studios headquarters and burn it down. <laughs> Add another zero. We want one hundred dollars and zero 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 cents. We will settle for nothing less. So, talking big numbers, Mason. Oh, big numbers. The budget of this was two hundred million dollars, and the box office return was one point nine billion. This was the first film since the rise of Skywalker to make a billion dollars, and that's without China's involvement or Russia's election interference. Or me being a hater. It's true. But look, I think <laughs> this has got to sound really dismissive. It's good enough. Yeah, great. For, for what they were doing. It's good enough. Great. <laughs> I they, think that's an unassailable argument. I mean, Honestly, I don't think anybody can complain in well, the comments. No, they will, because people will be like, no, you just wanted to hate it, but you didn't have the heart to hate it. I hate fucking Morbius, right? This is better than that. Okay? It is better than that. So there are things that are like really bad and on the nose. And then there's things that are on the nose, but mm. it, they work out kind of okay, you yeah. know? And then there's bits are amazing. Remember when Charlie Cox caught that brick? He caught the brick! Yeah. Although it was going to hit Spider-Man. So I mean, what? <laughs> he could have just let it hit him and Peter Parker would have been like, ow, but I'm Spider-Man. I can lift a tank over my head with one hand, so a brick isn't going to do anything. And you just... You basically just reveal that you're also a superhero of some kind, obviously. Yeah, dare, man. Daredevil. Are you daredevil? You are daredevil. You idiot. <laughs> you stupid idiot. <laughs> now, there's uh, there's rumours abound that what Marvel want to do mm -hmm. for Spider-Man 4, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're doing a new trilogy, That's right. is bring it back to the street level. Mm hmm basically do more of a low-key Spider-Man situation. Grounded. Whereas apparently Sony wants to bring back all the Spider-Men again. Absolutely. Because that's the thing that worked this time. That's true. But look, I think that will happen regardless in one of the next Avengers multiverse movies yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't need to do that. People won't like it this time, okay? <laughs> I, I just need Sony to understand that, right? you got to build up to it again. You can't uh -huh. just be like, and now the other Spider-Men are back for whatever reason. Mm. Please, please don't. It'll definitely make less money, yeah. but mm. you, you slowly build again, you know? What if Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and uh, Andrew Garfield... They all go into the the, the, the quantum realm. <laughs> you know, and it's huge. Yeah, it's pretty big down there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, what about that? That would work, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, great. Big. I would love that. Yeah. Like, fight Bill Murray or whatever. Like fight Bill <laughs> whatever's Murray. Whatever's down there. <laughs> 
Big is always better is what I'm saying. Big is always better. But sometimes it's smaller. That's right. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. Here's a hint towards next week, though. <laughs> now, if you'd like to say that early, which who wouldn't? Yeah. You can actually head over to Big Sound. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> head over to BigSandwich.co. It's good enough. I agree. The video's going to be good enough. Well, the video will be there, right? Yeah, that's right. Early. Mm -hmm. But there's also video game Let's Plays. There's movie commentaries. There's bonus podcasts. A whole bunch of exclusive stuff. Thousands of hours. So many zeros of hours up there, isn't it, Mason? Better believe it. That's right. Yeah, and it also helps us keep ads off this. Like, I'm not running ads where I'm like, get this VPN or whatever. You can get one if you want, but yeah. that's not down to me. That's between you and God and the VPN service. God has to sign off on that? Absolutely, he does. He can still see what you're looking at. Oh, uh, yeah. Until one day somebody builds a better VPN. That's right. And even God can't see what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Any Sony pictures Marvel movie, we're going to be talking about it, aren't we? We'll Mason? cover it. We'll do your Matt of Webs and whatever, won't we? Heck yeah, I guess. We do them all. It comes out every Monday. It's got its own YouTube channel, Apple, Spotify, all of that, doesn't it? Yes. Anyways, thank you for coming with us on this journey. Thank you to Ben and Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. We'll see you on the next video. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Make sure... Guys, you leave a big pause for the applause. The applause, yeah. <laughs> that's happening now. An applause pause. Yeah.